do, the question is, do you focus on the things that will actually propel the boat or do you just focus on being stable? And being stable is just like, you know, learning to row a pair. At the beginning, everybody's all focused on stability, but that will come by itself. It's better to focus on, on, on the core things that make the boat go fast. What do you do if you're a beginner? What are the things to look out for? What do you have to be careful about in order not to learn the wrong things? And my approach to coaching is I give you the big picture and then I work on specific details. So yes, some people may argue that, hey, RM dumps the whole load on everybody. That's fine. But if I, if I learn something, I want to get the whole picture. I want to understand why I'm doing something. Now with this video, my aim is to give you a bigger perspective of why certain things happen and how we can avoid these. Now for analysis, I've got two shots from the side. So this is the first shot. I will show you a couple of strokes and you see Jenna is struggling. It's very difficult for her just to accelerate the boat. She's trying to go all through the correct motion patterns and what to do. And we get one shot from the front, which doesn't show us a lot because the lighting is not excellent. And then there's one shot from the side where the lighting is actually very good. Now, what do we see? So first of all, for your third outing in a single, for everybody who's more proficient in a single, just recap. What did your third outing in a single look like? It's actually pretty good. There are a couple of very good things. For example, here at the catch, the, the arms stay pretty long. I will get into the details in a moment. The hip still hinges forward. Generally uses legs to propel the upper body, keeps the arms long and pivots around perpendicular. This thing here is priceless. Towards the finish, hands, come in straight and they complement the upper body swing. So with this, with these three elements, you're actually better than most proficient rowers who don't do this. A lot of rowers pick up the upper body at the catch or shoot the slides, which means you move out the seat before your hands actually start to um, pick up the same motion pattern that your seat does in terms of speed. A lot of people pivot the upper body way too early or not patient. A lot of people engage the arms now around perpendicular when the upper body should do its thing. So I think a lot of proficient rowers can just look at that and say, oh, um, that is probably how we should be rowing. Excellent. Very good work. Now let's come to the negatives. You wash out at the finish. The fact that your blades touch the water immediately is a matter of confidence. Um, that, that's an issue we see with many proficient rowers. You, if you look at this, you probably find yourself, oh, I, I'm doing the same thing. Listen, the reason why General is doing this is look at the hands. The left hand is significantly higher than the right hand. Now what this means at the finish, if you're set up here, let's go back a bit, I hope I'm still in focus. Um, when your hands are that far apart, the boat will be unstable. And General, you wrote that you had issues with the boat going towards port side, if I'm not fully mistaken. There are always directional issues when the hands don't exit cleanly. Now, what is a clean exit? Essentially, at the finish, we want to make sure that our hands are vertically aligned. I know there is a height difference from the left to the right oar lock, which is usually eight millimeters to one and a half centimeters. But that's this much, not more. You don't even see it. The camera probably doesn't pick it up a lot. So at the finish, your hands should aim to be almost level. It's not your body that leans to the side that, that has a lot of influence whether or not the boat is actually stable or not. It is the hand levels. The hands control the blades. And with the control of your blades, that boat is more than three meters wide. It's a big boat. So our handle control determines how stable we are at the finish. Now, are we more stable if we exit in such a way where the blades touch the water immediately? That's not just a beginner issue. Actually, we are in flat conditions. So the truth is in conditions like these, yes, you will be significantly more stable. However, these conditions are not the norm. They are the exception. 
it makes a lot of sense to become independent from weather conditions. There are very successful rowers who simply cannot handle bad conditions. They call it tough luck. Rowing is an outdoor sport, ladies and gents. So I recommend to become very comfortable with getting the blades off the water immediately. Now at the finish, you may not have all the space in the world, but what you can do is come in straight and exit with, with squared blades. Push down, fetter. However, there's a caveat. The exit at the finish is always a washout. It has to be. Realistically speaking, if you look at the blades here, here, there always has to be a washout. So you don't do this. You simply, you simply fetter the blades in the water. Now that's tricky because if you do this, The slightest, bit of, the slightest bit of wave or rough water would actually make you catch a crab. So what you want to do is get the blades off the water, get some clearance. Now, how do you do this? Make sure your hands are level left and right. And the way you exit, uh, the, the way your blades exit the water will determine largely how stable the recovery will feel to you. So what you need to do is come in straight, push down, stable, vertically aligned, and then fetter. Now, the exit itself will be a washout. You cannot go in straight, disconnect. No, it's a gradual washout. When is it too much? When you lose, when you, when you, have, when you still have a lot of the drive left when the blade is already half in the water or even in the air. This is when we call it a washout. But realistically speaking, the finish will always be a washout. But realistically speaking, the finish will always be a washout. So, remember, at the finish, Hands level, push down, square. You want to you want to wash out as little as possible, but you understand that a bit of a washout is unavoidable. It is a necessity. Now, what do you do next? At that stage, it's important to get the courage. Simply push down, fetter, and then hold. This is why I'm a big proponent of that pause at the finish. It's a style question. I know some people don't like to do this. For me, there are more ups and downs to this, more advantages than disadvantages. So at the finish, after getting the blades out of the water, pushing down, having the hands level, fettering, then you pause and you stabilize the boat, you sense the boat. With all your senses, you stabilize the blades off the water. That requires some core tension. I see you do have sufficient. What you could do, General, is in that, if you're in that position, upper abs, lower abs out. Tension is everything. So now you push down, that the exit was time-wise perfectly aligned and the hands are aligned as well. If one, blade, if one blade gets out of the water too late, then the boat's gonna tilt. So you gotta make sure your hands are together and you're going straight, bah, that push down initiative motion, the initial momentum is very well synchronized. Now as you go forward here, this is where your blades should be off the water by a full blade height and a half. Because when, whenever the blade rotates, it doesn't rotate with, with uh, the shaft in the center, it flaps down. So you need a full blade height and still have clearance between the water and your blade. And at that stage, what you do very well is that you try to rock over with your pelvis. A lot of people just bring the upper section of the trunk forward. In general, what you do very well is you actually rotate around the pelvis. Nicely done. However, something that will cause more troubles down the line, and it's the second issue you've got, is you extend the arms completely. Now, if you extend your arms completely, right with the hands away, what happens is that your shoulders tighten up, and then your shoulders go up. So I, I found it to be very helpful at the finish. Hands out, 75% arm extension. At that stage, you slightly drop your elbows, then you have loose, and loose elbows, and then your elbows, um, the heaviness of your elbows actually brings your shoulders down, and then you have the mobility in the shoulder blades. I talked about this in the last video analysis video where I helped um, the young guy from Chile. That is exactly the same issue. So that finish straight up, that's not gonna do the job. Because what this does is it stiffens up everything. 
Now, if you had your hands, your arms extended only, you know, 75%, so three, three quarter, when do you extend them? And the answer is now, as you reach the catch. So in a utopiously ideal world, your blades now would be pretty far off the water, your shoulder would be low, and in order to get the blades closer to the water, there's one motion you need to practice. It's extending completely, bring your, bring your hands up, which means the blades will go down. This is why we need half a blade height of clearance. So you do that motion here, the last bit of the extension, and that will also give you the nice pre-stretch and pre-tension in the shoulders that you need. The thing is that the way you learn to row now has a lot has a lot of influence how you understand to propel the boat because you will become more proficient. With every kilometer you row and every mile you row, you do will become significantly more proficient. Do, the question is, do you focus on the things that will actually propel the boat or do you just focus on being stable? And being stable is just like, you know, learning to row the pair. At the beginning, everybody's all focused on stability, but that will come by itself. It's better to focus on, on, on the core things that make the boat go fast, which is legs to upper body transition. So generally, you've got a lot of things going very well for you. Now, with this being said, I hope this video brought some value to you. If it did, please leave it a like, give it a thumbs up and share it. And most importantly, please subscribe to the channel. Every YouTuber asks for this because it is important. The more subscribers you have, the more likely it is your videos will show up. And the more subscribers I have, the more the videos I've seen, the more time I can and will spend with videos like these, where I, not, where I do a video analysis of a beginner for free. Now, with this being said, if you want to work with me, go to aramtraining.com. We have a lot of live one-on-one -on -one sessions and live group sessions indoors and on water, as well as training planning, which is my key competence. Register for the Arm Training newsletter. This is where I send out news about the training camps for the next season first. With this being said, thank you very much for watching until the end. I wish you all the best. I'm looking very much forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.